Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to share with you in the Word of God. God is good and you know it. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be adored on this beautiful June the 12th, 2024. And as we're coming on to the air, I just received the information for the visual, visual uh, board party. So I want to jump in here really, really quickly and share this on the Balance of Life's Facebook page. It is being held by Prophetess Yolanda Lee George, and I did mention it on yesterday uh, that I wanted to get the information over to you. So she has recently shared the flyer with me. I want to tell you not even two seconds ago, and I wanted to keep my word. Hear that ding dong sound? That is me posting it on the church, uh, the Facebook page for the Balance of Life, uh, and so now that information is available. Uh, it is being held in Tampa. It is a vision board party entitled "Where Are You?" Uh, the host is by You'll Overcome Ministries. The founder of You'll Overcome Ministries is Prophetess Yolanda Lee George. The date is July the 13th at 2024, uh, 12 to 3 o'clock p.m. It's only $10 per person, and it comes with supplies and light snacks. Uh, that information has been now available on the Facebook page for The Balance of Life, uh, how you can contact her, RSVP. And when you email, go ahead and uh, ask if it is going to have a virtual option for you because I want to make sure that if you are interested in attending uh, this vision board party it's mid-year we are actually in the middle of the year of the fiscal year and uh, just wanting to know where you are with your vision All right, so which we're going to talk about today. I want to talk about um, where you are with your vision, uh, and you have to own it. Um, like what you do, because it's a gift that God gave you. This is something that God gave you specifically, and so you must like it. <laughs> you must like it. You must love it own it. Uh, it is you. And so you should become one with what has been given unto you. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, and so I often have to remind myself. And so I, I share these things with you uh, because it is something that I have to remind myself of. I remind myself of what God gave me. I remind myself of who has blessed me, who has given me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do what it is that I do. And I love it. And I own it. When I say I own it, means that it is going to reflect me. And I'm going to give it 100%. And so when you own something you give it the best you, you give it 100 percent it's you it's yours it doesn't belong to anybody else and so whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it and so i'm going to do a post really really quickly I 
and promoting for someone else. I absolutely love it. And this is what we do here at The Balance of Life. Our ministry is about encouraging others. And if you have a event uh, that you have coming up for ministry, a conference, and you want us to talk about it and share it, please feel free to email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and we'll definitely share your content of what you have coming up. It doesn't matter where you are because this event is in Tampa and I'm in New Jersey. And so wherever you are, if you have an event that is coming up and you would like to share that event, uh, with us so that we can share it with our listening audience. I would love to hear from you. Just email us over at the balance of life one at yahoo.com. If it's a flyer with all of the pertinent information, we'll put it on the page for the balance of life and make mention of it here via our radio program. And also some of those events all depends on how far out they are can actually make it into hope and truth magazine. So this is something that I love to do. I wish I was there. I was actually there. She did one last year and I was able to be in attendance. It was actually awesome. Awesome, awesome event. Um, and it's good to look at your vision. It's good to see where you are. It's good to uh, understand where you are in the vision. Oftentimes we quote, and I'm going to go over to one of my favorite passages of scripture when it pertains to vision. And that is over in Habakkuk, the second chapter. <clears throat> Oftentimes we jump immediately and we quote the scripture text that says, write the vision, make it plain. Um, which is in the second verse of Habakkuk, the second chapter, and we skip over the very first verse. <clears throat> this is where I say own it. Uh, whenever you have a vision, it is important to have clarity of the vision. That's right, have clarity. And in order to get clarity, then we need to pray about some stuff, right? Uh, we have examples when it comes to vision. We have Noah. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Moses, we have David and Solomon, and here we also have Habakkuk. Uh, and so over in Habakkuk, uh, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am approved. And so we can have our own idea of the way that something is supposed to go but God has a way in which he he wants it fulfilled because it is for the benefit of the kingdom of heaven so whatever your vision is I want to tell you that your vision is not for you uh, your vision has a intended audience your vision has some intended recipients to receive the gift that's in you. So if your vision is uh, a hair salon, then people are going to receive what you have. They are going to become the recipients of your services. And you want to make sure that what they receive is 100% perfection. And we grow by maturity. We grow in our vision. Every person who has a vision, as they come into different seasons of the vision, are growing. At least they should be. They should be growing spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. 
We haven't even gotten to the aspects of financial because that's a part of it. But the main components are the spiritual areas in which we grow in. So when you have a vision, you have to understand, listen, my vision has an intended audience. Am I ready for my audience to receive? Am I ready? Because I have to give them something. God did not give me a vision. He did not give me a gift. And I am the only intended party. That it's just supposed to be for me. That I'm supposed to look back and, and see what I have created. And, and say, oh, look what I've done. But who is receiving the vision? Noah. Let's look at Noah. That vision had an intended purpose. Even in that time, the animals and everything, they were kept so that they can, what, reproduce, right? It had an intended purpose. God didn't just have him to build the ark just for it to sit there. It had a recipient. It had an audience that needed to come in. Uh, the, the tabernacle that Moses was instructed to build, the Ark of the Covenant. It had an intended purpose, for and, and, and it had an audience. They were to receive something from the Ark of the Covenant. The house of the Lord that David desired to build, but his son ended up building had a purpose. It's over in Second Chronicles 6 chapter. The dedication of that house. Solomon did some specific things. He asked for some specific things that if individuals would come to this house, this temple, and he covered a multitude of things, would God hear from them? And God responded. So your vision, whatever God gave you, has an intended audience. Your audience is supposed to receive something from the gift that God gave you. But are we ready to give them what they are supposed to receive? And have we prepared properly so that they get what they're supposed to receive? You ever went to a place expecting to receive something and the your expectations were not met that's because the person who had that vision the person who was in charge was not prepared to give their intended audience what they were expecting to receive and if you put something out there that this is who you are and this is the vision. And uh, in the business world, we call it uh, the mission statement, the vision statement. Your mission voices your purpose. And so when people come, they've seen a write-up of your vision. That's why the scripture says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may that he may run that readeth it so when i read it and i listen i'm coming i'm looking to expect what you said but did i receive what you said it's just like saying you're hosting an event and you're going to have a gourmet lunch well what's your definition of gourmet because if you decide to do hors d'oeuvres or just peanuts and chips, that's not gourmet. That's misleading. Or if you are a caterer and someone orders something from you for an event, they are expecting to receive what they ordered from you. So that's why you have to own the vision. You and the vision are one. Because that gift is inside of you. So we have to spend some time and get prepared. 
we must uh, study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Understand what it is that you have. What is it that you have? What is your gift? How is your gift meant to serve? That takes us over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, where it begins to talk about uh, the apostle, the, the pastor, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher. Well, when someone comes to an apostle, to a prophet, to an evangelist, to a pastor, to a teacher, if they have studied what to expect from these offices, then that's what they're looking for. And when they get there and they're not receiving, based off what the word of God says, then we are not owning the vision. We're not owning our gift. Maybe we don't understand what we have. Maybe we have uh, launched things prematurely. Maybe we're trying to um, put the cart before the horse, so to speak, without fully understanding what it is that we have. I just want us to be ready. I just want us to be ready. Because your audience is waiting on you. That's right. Your audience is waiting on you. And I want them to receive what they are supposed to receive from you. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Listen, I want to invite you to visit us on our website www.angelferguson-ministries.com via the website you have the opportunity to check out our ministry schedule for television and for radio which includes Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday right here with you via Spriker also on Saturday mornings we have in-depth Bible study via Podbean on our website, you can also find out information for our School of Ministry and the courses that we offer, the length of time that we offer. Also, our publishing division. And then we have another website for Hope and Truth Magazine. So excited about this. It is hopeandtruthmagazine.godaddy.com.site. So excited about this. We've been in here and... Uh, I just added uh, some of our antique collection. Hope and Truth Magazine is about words of encouragement. We have something for every aspect of ministry. We also have a home and decor and fashion. And just so excited about what God has given us over 20 years. And we want to share it with you. All digital copies of Hope and Truth Magazine are absolutely free. If you would like a digital copy, please feel free to email us here at the Balance of Life One, and we will most definitely send you a digital copy of Hope and Truth Magazine. You can also subscribe six months or a year. Simply email us today, and we will get you details on how you can subscribe to Hope and Truth Magazine. Today, we're talking about Own Your Vision. And I just wanted to share with you some things that are coming up. We also have another uh, event that I shared with you on yesterday. And it is Beauty, Beauty of a Woman Ministry. Uh, it is a identity crisis retreat. And it is themed Releasing Your Baggage. The dates are October 4th and 5th, 2024. The information has been made available on my Facebook page. And I'm going to get this and share this on the Facebook page for The Balance of Life so that you can have access to that as well. Uh, this is something that is also in Tampa, but I do believe that they are going to have it virtually as well. And so... 
Let's get that up there right now because I want you to have access to these things that we are sharing. And once again, if you have an event that you would like for us to share, we would love for you to email it to us here at the balance of life one at yahoo.com. If it is connected to ministry, uh, it is absolutely free. This is nothing that we charge for. We will share your ministry events that are coming up and uh, via radio. If it's really far out in advance, we will also uh, share it within our magazine for Hope and Truth magazine. I want you to do great in what it is that God has for you to do. Um, nobody can do what you were created to do. God has something specific that he wants you to do. All we have to do is find out God's plans and believe his plans by faith. It's all about faith. So we, we first of all have to believe that God um, entrusts us. He gave us something to do. And we, we believe by faith that we can accomplish whatever God gave us to do. We need some instructions. We need some directions. And so we have to have counsel. We have to have, um, we must, we must, we must have clarity on what God wants us to do. So whenever you need some examples from the word of God on vision and owning it, uh, which means I'm going to give it 100%. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I follow God's instructions per the letter. Uh, I'm not going to deviate because I have an understanding that what he gave me has an intended audience. And others are supposed to receive from me. The gift that God gave me, others are to receive from it. So am I ready to invite them? Am I ready to engage with them? Am I ready to put the vision out there? Be proud of what you do. That's right. When I say own it, I want you to be proud of what you do. I'm not talking about pride or arrogance, but I want you to look at it and say, yes. Would you buy this? See, that's that, that's a whole thing with me. I'm not going to give you something that I won't buy. So if I do it, I want it to be good. I want it to be presentable. I want to say I put my approval on that because I'm representing Christ. As long as I keep that mindset that whatever I do, I am representing Christ. I am utilizing the gifts that he gave me. Your gifts will make room for you. But are we developing our gifts? Are we in the lab perfecting our gifts? Your gift could be in catering. I've mentioned that before. There's different types of caterers. Um, bakers, are you in the lab perfecting it? Because there is an audience for you. There is a target market. There is a customer base for you. But when they come, are they getting what they expected? Or are they disappointed? Are they disappointed? It's up to me to make sure that they're not disappointed. It's up to me to make sure that whatever I put out there, I stand behind. Because me and the vision are one. And it's not about anything else but making sure that I please God, that I honor God with what he gave me. And when we make sure that we're honoring God with what he gave us, 
That's all that counts. That is all that counts. I am honoring God. And what I do represents Christ. Uh, recently, and, and it's been a couple of years, um, the co-pastor of a church that I belong to, I often would hear her say and talk about the spirit of excellence. And that is how we should operate. Don't be in a rush to put something out there. But make sure that it is done in the right spirit, which is of Christ Jesus. Because you have an intended audience. So think about that. Think about that. I have an intended audience. Whatever gift God gave you. If it's in the gift of helps. If it's in the gift of administration. Someone is supposed to receive your gifts. If it's on your job, they are receiving the benefit of your gifts. If it's in the ministry, they are receiving the benefit of your gifts. Whether you're being paid or whether you are volunteering, either way, they should be receiving your best. Mm -hmm. Yes, they should. Because the gift came from God. Now, we're not going to get into um, people who try to uh, abuse their access to you. That's another day. That's another time. You have to be wise in everything that you do and in everything that you say. You must be wise. You must be wise. And in everything that you do, to God be the glory. We honor God with everything that we have. We honor him with our substance. And I want you, you have no idea, I am rooting for you. I am rooting for you. So think about that. Think about the fact that, you know what, what I am doing today, I am preparing for my intended audience. I am getting ready. My mom reminded me, I believe it was two weeks ago, of the song, God is preparing me for what I cannot handle right now. That song is so true. You're getting prepared for your intended audience. You might not be able to handle it right now because we need to mature in it. We need to understand it. And we need to wait for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to direct us in it. But there is greatness in you. God's gift, he placed inside of you. Before you were, he thought about you. So as he was thinking about you, he said, before I placed you in your mother's womb, before you were formed in the mother's womb, I ordained you. So you were created with gifts. And not everybody has a vision to start a business or for ministry. But you have a gift in you. Mm -hmm. Gift of helps. Compassion. Those are gifts. You know, everybody is not compassionate. Everybody does not have the gift of faith. We have faith unto salvation, but there is a gift of faith. And those who come in contact with you, that gift helps them. So look at your vision that way. Your vision is not about you. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you have been given, and those are gifts, they are not for you alone. Yes, you are the first partaker, but they have an audience, and that audience is waiting on you. Check out our books via our website. Our newest publications are Being Drawn to Prayer. 
as well as the seven works of grace we released those books and you know what we were able to give away a lot of books in the month of april and may we're going to pick another month to do it again have a blessed day